Hey friends, I hope your week is off to a great start. Today we're going to be trying out Chris Morocco's recipe for Big Flavor Broccoli. This is from the Healthy-ish series, so I am really looking forward to having something a little bit lighter after all the baking I've been doing over the last 10 weeks. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So first up, you're going to need a pound of broccoli. So uh, I've got two medium-sized heads here, and this is just over one pound. So we're going to cut off the woody stems just at the tip here. You can see that the texture here, this looks really dry and gross. This looks much moister. And then the next thing we're going to do is peel these. So what I love about this recipe is that we're using not only the florets, but we're also using the stalks. So when I made Chris Morocco's recipe for broccoli Caesar salad, he called for the broccoli stems in the recipe as well. Most recipes don't call for them, so then you're just left to figure out what to do with them all on your own. So really happy that he is kind of solving that problem by writing the recipe in a sustainable and useful way. So there is a color and texture change here. It's probably not going to show up on camera, but if you look carefully, you can see that this stem that I've peeled is very pale green. It's really smooth and glossy. Uh, the unpeeled stem is kind of a whitish green. It looks really fibrous and tough. So this I can actually pierce with my fingernails. So that's when you know you're down far enough. All right, so both stalks are peeled. We can go ahead and discard the little bits of trimmings from the outside. And then next we're going to trim the stems at a 45 degree angle into about three quarter inch thick pieces. So just kind of eyeballing it here. And once you get up to where all of the stems are joining together, go ahead and stop. All right, then the recipe says we wanna break these florets apart by hand. So you just want them to be in kind of little bite sized pieces. Great, so these are all nice kind of bite sized pieces of broccoli. Next up, we're gonna slice our onion. So I've got one small red onion here. And we're going to cut this into strips so you can go ahead and remove the top and bottom. You don't need to keep the root intact. The last bit of prep we need to do is slicing some garlic. So I've got four cloves of garlic here. I'm going to just smash these with my knife and then we can peel them and then slice them. So you could definitely just slice these by hand. However, I haven't used my mandolin in a while so I kind of want to break it out. So I've got my cut glove for safety and I'm just going to slice these lengthwise uh, to get some nice flat pieces of garlic. That looks really nice. Nice and thin, nice and even. I absolutely love this mandolin. It's one of my favorite kind of kitchen utensils. This one wasn't super expensive. I will link it down below in case you're interested in getting one, um, but absolutely happy with this and it was not expensive at all. So you can see in just a matter of seconds, we've got perfectly even slices of garlic. So we'll set these aside. And this is called Big Flavor Broccoli. So we've got garlic and onions, pretty baseline. Uh, next up is some anchovies. So um, this is optional, I guess. Everything's optional when you're cooking for yourself, but um, the recipe calls for six anchovy fillets. I do like anchovies. I like anchovies in my Caesar. I like anchovies on pizza. Um, I enjoy that really kind of strong, fishy, salty taste. If you don't care for that, or if you don't care for it as much, you could use um, sardines. It would give you kind of a similar vibe. You'd get a little bit more um, kind of large chunks of fish. Uh, so that might be a nice option. If you don't want to, you know, buy something special, if you have fish sauce, you could use fish sauce. Um, maybe just a couple dashes of that. Alternatively, uh, Worcestershire sauce uh, would kind of give a similar vibe as well. So um, you could skip this, but I think you're going to be missing out on a lot of the flavor. So now that everything's prepped, we can go over to the stove and get cooking. So I've got my 10 inch cast iron skillet over medium high heat preheating. Any oven safe pan will work here. It doesn't have to be cast iron, it could be stainless, whatever you have. And now the pan is hot. So at this point we can go ahead and add in the oil. You do wanna let your pan preheat before you put the oil in. That will ensure that you get a nonstick coating. I think that was an Alton Brown video that taught me that. And once you've got the oil in, we're gonna let this heat until it gets glossy. Oil looks like it's shimmering pretty nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in all of our broccoli. Oh yeah. So you can hear it sizzling there. Obviously this pan is nice and hot. I did wash the broccoli. I tried to get it as dry as I could based on the little bit of splattering that we have. Maybe it wasn't 100% dry, but that's okay. And we're gonna cook this for about three minutes. You want it to get nice and bright green, so getting that rawness off. You also wanna have a little bit of charring starting to show up on the edges. And while this cooks, I'm gonna go ahead and season it up with just a little bit of kosher salt. And my 10 inch skillet seems to be about the right size for this amount of broccoli. I think if you were to go down to an eight or nine inch skillet, it would probably be a bit too small. 
Uh, a 12 inch skillet though probably would be okay here. So 10 or 12 inches and I think you'll be good to go. All right, and I'm liking the look of that after four minutes. So you can see there's a little bit of charring happening on some of the stems. Some of the florets are picking up color as well. So I like that. And we can go ahead and scrape this pan out. So I'm gonna remove the broccoli from the pan back onto the same plate uh, where we started. All right, so same pan back over the heat. And now over medium heat, we're gonna add in two more tablespoons of oil. And we're gonna let that oil get hot again so it's nice and shimmery. This should take only a couple seconds since cast iron retains heat so well. All right, so that oil is looking nice and shimmery. So now we're gonna go ahead and add in the onion and the garlic. We're gonna cook this for about three minutes. We're looking for the onions to soften up and the garlic to take on just a little bit of color. So keep everything moving around, break up those onion pieces. All right, and it has been just about three minutes. You can see the onions have definitely softened up. They're starting to lose a little bit of their bright red color. They're starting to get a little bit translucent. So this is a sign that we are now ready for the anchovies. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape the anchovies in here and still over medium heat, we're gonna cook this for about two more minutes. During this time, we're gonna keep an eye on the garlic. We want it to get golden brown. We're also gonna be breaking up our anchovies using the side of our spoon or a spatula. You want these in little kind of fragmented pieces that are gonna get evenly distributed throughout the dish. But again, the visual cue we're looking for is for the garlic to be nice and golden brown and toasty. All right, so that has been just about four minutes. The garlic is definitely picking up more of a golden brown color. So I am liking the look of that. And now we can add in the broccoli that we kind of pre-cooked. We're gonna pop this just back in on top and give it a stir to get everything coated. So you wanna to toss this around, get that anchovy onion garlic oil all over the broccoli, get kind of everything evenly distributed throughout the mixture. With everything tossed together, we can pop this into our preheated 400 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes until the broccoli is nice and tender and crispy and charred all over. We're gonna stop halfway through and give it a toss just to make sure that everything's cooking evenly. So in we go. While that broccoli roasts in the oven, the last thing we need to do is prep our Parmesan. So we're gonna finish this with freshly grated Parmesan. You can use a microplane, you could use a box grater. I'm gonna do blender parm today. So here I've got a half pound of Parmigiano Reggiano. Um, I need to cut off the rind here. And then we're gonna cut this into nice kind of even blocks. That way we'll get even processing in the blender. You don't have to be super precise because we're throwing it in the blender. So uh, with all of these chunks, in they go. And we're just gonna pulse this. So I'll use the, what, the ice crush setting. Perfect. So 15 seconds, that's all it took. So you can see the texture here. This is really kind of crumbly. It's almost like uh, Dippin' Dots, like the ice cream of the future, where it's little pebbles and granules that um, they want to stick together a bit, but they're also their kind of own independent thing. So um, it allows you to spread a nice uniform layer over the top of a dish that you're baking. You need a nice blender. So if you don't have one of these high power blenders, this probably isn't an option for you in that case. Just use the medium holes on a box grater and you'll be okay. Perfect. All right, and this broccoli cooked for a total of 20 minutes. You can see that there are some nice brown bits on the broccoli. The onions look really soft. Everything looks really tender, but not uh, kind of to that mushy state. Uh, from the appearance anyway, we'll see how it actually tastes. So now we've got our blender parm and we're just gonna sprinkle this over the top. So you can see how nicely this is sprinkling compared to Think of a microplaned Parmesan, it would just be a clumpy mess. So I absolutely love this situation. And it's just a quarter cup, it's not a ton of Parmesan cheese here. Now, interestingly, we are not putting this back into the oven or under the broiler. So we're relying solely on the residual heat of the broccoli and the cast iron pan to help melt that Parmesan cheese. So if you want your cheese a bit more melty or a bit browned, by all means, pop that under the broiler for a moment or two. Just keep a close eye on it so that you don't burn anything. But uh, we're not going to do that. So we are ready to serve. 
So our Parmesan cheese has been on the big flavor broccoli for about three minutes and it is just starting to melt on the surface of the broccoli. So this looks absolutely incredible. I can't wait to give it a taste. So let's see how it is. Get a nice florette here. Got some onion on there. Mmm. Nice. The color of this is darkened up, but the broccoli still has a little bit of that toothiness to it. So it's perfectly roasted. I was concerned that the color was darkening too much and we were going to have a soggy broccoli situation on our hands, but this is wonderful. The onions have picked up a little bit of sweetness during the cooking process, so I really like that. There's kind of this um, like creamy glaze situation happening with the Parmesan cheese melting into the oil that has the garlic and the onion juices in there. So the anchovy flavor is very subtle. I was hoping for it to be a little bit more anchovy forward. This is very well balanced, I think, even if you're not an anchovy lover. If you like Caesar dressing, it's about that level of intensity, so it's not, you know, too in your face. So good. So overall, I am really happy with the big flavor broccoli. The taste of this is easily 10 times better than a normal roasted broccoli with salt, pepper, and oil. Um, but better yet, it didn't really take any more time than a normal roasted broccoli. Not really any special ingredients um, that you need to go out and buy. So overall, I would say this is definitely worth giving a try. So really hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.